Ladies and gentlemen, it is championship week. The implications are higher than ever, and we're here to deliver you the best injury analysis available and have they impact your run to glory in winning a fantasy football championship. I'm your host, Joe D'Amico. Here with me is the doctor of physical therapy, Tom Christ. Tom, you're ready to bring it all home, baby. Here we go. I'm ready, man. I'm in. I'm in in my main league. Can't ask for more than that. You're in. Okay. Was that, that's 12 man league, right? Your home, home main league. Yeah. Yeah. 12, 12 teams, same guys since seventh grade. All right. That's how you got to do it. Are you favored underdogs? What do we got? I am the underdog by about five, but it feels like it should be by about 50. Listen, anything can happen. Only five. We'll take that. All right. So I'm dwindling, dwindling a little bit. Playoffs in six out of six. Semis in four out of six, finals in two out of six. At least I'm there in two. Um, one of them, of course, is the family league, which if you remember the beginning of the year, I was like three and eight, and I scrapped and clawed my way all the way back. Now I'm playing Jesse in the finals, who Jesse's co-manager is my wife and my three-month-old daughter, four-month-old daughter now. So that's a, that's an interesting one. And then uh, in my work league, I'm in the finals. And then, of course, the classic one-on-one league where there's obviously no playoffs. It's just one-on-one. We're both, how many weeks? What are we at? Week 17. We're both eight and eight. So it comes down to Whoa. this week. Oh, I, I would hope you'd make the championship. In that one. <laughs> one of the fake teams, because ESPN makes you fill in four teams. So there's two fake teams of like people you never heard of before. <laughs> ah, that's funny. But it's going to be fun, man. We got, listen, we get, we got a lot to talk about today. We got injuries. We got start sit, mailbag. Tom, a couple of bold predictions for the people too out here. Let's, let's have some fun here. Let's, uh, let's win some championships. Who are you playing against? I mean, I don't know if I would know them, but yeah, no, you wouldn't know. My friend uh, Jason Bellotti, he uh, grew up two blocks, block or two down the road from me. Um, he's got a dynamite team, man. He actually went with the zero RB approach, and it worked. It worked this year. Yeah. I'm always so against it preseason, but man, those people are rewarded this year. Yeah, so he's got Jalen Hurts or Minshew. He's got Ramondre, Pollard, Chase, Hill, and Waddle. So, wow, with, he's got I a mean, roster. We're going to talk about two a little bit, and without him, he'll waddle a little deep. Yes. Time. But the thing is, here's the problem for me. You said Tony Pollard, so he wins. <laughs> well, just, we'll, uh, we'll talk about him as well. We'll talk about him too. So perfect little segue here. Let's rock and roll, man. Let's start to talk about injuries here. So first, uh, first little run here. A lot of quarterbacks and and a couple wide receivers too with implications there. But starting with the aforementioned two, a concussion. I think he's probably done for the season, right, Tom? I think we're going to be probably not even through if they make the playoffs, not seeing any more Tua. What do you think? Yeah, this is this is not a good situation for anyone. Um, I talked to our good friend Andrew Tier Ketter about this. If you'll remember, he's the one who would join us on the concussion episode. He's a neuro and concussion specialist. He his his assessment was that Tua's brain is likely what's called sensitized. So what can happen is there's there's a normal threshold of impact that is needed for someone to experience pain or in the brain to experience a concussion, right? When you've had a concussion and then another one and then another one in short period of time being like one football season, it now takes less of a threshold for you to have a subsequent concussion. So that's not good at all for anyone, especially for a football player. Um, I, I, it doesn't sound like he's going to play this week, and that's good. That's smart. I would, I have concerns with him playing the rest of the season. Um, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. He may not even be cleared by week 18 because, as we know, subsequent con- concussions, it typically takes longer for a person to become no longer symptomatic and get through the protocol. So he may not even be ready by week 18 and they may not make the playoffs if they keep losing. Right. So we'll see what happens um, with this being the NFL. I imagine that as soon as he's cleared, they will put him back in. But yeah, this is definitely a concern. Definitely a downgrade for all of the Miami receiving options. Like Bridgewater is okay, but he historically provides for like one player. Right. So not, not two, like two has been providing for Hill and Waddle in the same game multiple times. So kind of talk about my matchup coming up. That makes me feel a little better. I don't think that Bridgewater is going to throw for 350 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, but yeah, this is a concerning situation for Tua. 
So it's almost like his brain is, I know it's sad to say this, like compromised almost at this point. And now his brain to, to dumb it down is like injury prone almost. Right. That's kind of what you said by sensitized or is that? Is that Sen- like yeah. 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 That, that's a good way to good way to put it. Um, and, and again, I, I understand concussion. I'm not an expert in it. Like Andrew tier Ketterers, which is why I asked him. And, and I, I believe the understanding is after a whole off season, he shouldn't be that sensitized anymore. So okay. he should at least not quite where he is now. Uh, maybe right. not. He may never be at the baseline of pre any concussions. And I don't think anybody who's had concussions will be, but I think after the off season, he should be in a much better place than he is right now. Okay. And like you said, Teddy Bridgewater steps in here. Now just looked at some career numbers. His career average per completion is 7.3 yards to put into perspective this year to a, averages 8.9 yards per completion. I know that doesn't sound that significant, but a lot of quarterbacks are right around that seven, eight, nine number and almost a two yard difference is kind of significant. And I don't think Bridgewater is going to air it out as much and look to throw the ball down the field. Again, they're playing the Patriots this week who already don't score that much. It's a division game. It could be close. I think this kind of bears well for you, Tom, in your matchup. I mean, again, well, just to the running game, Mostert and Wilson, I feel like we've talked about them all year, man. It's almost like a coin flip, like which one's going to fall in the end zone. I don't like taking risks there. If I'm in the championship, I don't know that I could play Mostert or Wilson, especially because, again, we don't know. One could have 10 carries. One could have eight. One could have 14 if they're running hot. The other could have two. So that's tough. But let's just pivot to what you were mentioning, Tyreek or Waddle. I mean, <laughs> all bias removed, Tom. Are, are they sittable? I mean, can we sit no, them? Would you no, ever no, consider no. sitting them God, at any goodness, point? Goodness, no. Okay. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm just checking all my boxes here. Just want to make sure that that's not the message here. But you, you know why? Well, one, if we look at Teddy Bridgewater in Carolina, he did supply well for, for DJ Moore on a lot of games. So we do think that at least one of these guys has a good chance of having a good game. But both of them are guys that can catch we saw it with waddle last week they can catch a simple slant and take it the rest of the way themselves it's like a ridiculous 84 yard run just out yeah i mean i'm with you i mean i'm just kind of poking the bear here and just seeing what you would think but i don't see a world where where you could sit hill especially if you i mean i bet you he's on a lot of championship teams he's what wide receiver three two three four something like that i mean he's been great and waddle's been in the top 10 too so you're right i mean it might we might have to temper expectations a little bit for them but i don't think we're sitting them Okay. On to your boy here. Uh, really hurt me last week, and, and, it, and it was painful in, for all my fantasy teams and for a lot, but is there any update on Jalen Hurts? His shoulder, discussed a little bit last week. It didn't look like he – I know they didn't rule him out yet, but, I mean, everything I'm seeing looks like he's not going to play. What do you think, Tom? You agree? So this is interesting. It was actually an SC joint, a sternoclavicular joint injury, not an AC joint. So AC joint is on the, if you, if you touch your collarbone and you go away from the inside of your body, you eventually get to the AC joint. The SC is if you touch your collarbone, you go all the way in towards your sternum, your breastbone. Um, as far as how this functionally impacts a thrower, pretty similarly, both those joints need to move subtly, but yet very, in very important ways with the throwing motion. I actually think the SC joint is easier to treat from a rehab standpoint. Um, there's a lot of really nice manual techniques we can do to get that joint moving well, whereas the AC joint there is as well, but it's just a little tougher. Similar way that this type of injury impacts the throwing motion, the ligaments, when they get injured, they often, there's, there's inflammation and there's stiffness and muscle guarding in the region that it's you know not super hard to, to treat. But it, there's a time, there's a temporal component to it. Like you, you need some time for that inflammation to go down, for the tissue to, to heal and, and things like that. So again, I kind of stand where I was last week. I think he's going to be totally fine for the actual playoffs, the NFL playoffs. Uh, he did not practice today, but I know he's fighting to get out there this week because if the Eagles win, they lock up the, the first round bye. They don't do they win. need? Do they need one win in the next two weeks? Is that what it is yes. for the Eagles? Okay. Yes. Or they need. I think it's either either one win in the next two games, or Dallas and Minnesota to both lose one of their last two. I think. Okay. So I mean, not that Week 18 matters, but if we see the Eagles lose this week and the Vikings and Cowboys both win, we might see him back out for 18. But in terms of Week 17 of the championship, we don't think we're going to see him out there. Well, keep keep watching. He, I mean, he didn't practice today, but he certainly could practice tomorrow or Friday. 
I miss him already, even as a Giants fan. I miss just plugging him in at my quarterback and watching magic happen. But listen, Minshew slung it around, man, to the tune of 355, 355 yards, two touchdowns. This dude should be an NFL starter, man. There's no excuse. Why he he's will that. be next year. I, I think, think he, will he be. has to be. Yeah. And he might even be playing for a contract next year for a trade next year. Like he might be looking to, you know, he had a great game last week in, in, in a, in a high scoring match. Um, but I think that he should start. And I think like you said, he will next year. Eagles play the saints this week, last week, AJ Brown, who we'll get to next and Devontae Smith, both over a hundred yards receiving without Hertz and with Minshew. I think you start both of them, no doubt, as long as AJ Brown is healthy. Um, and Tom, like you said last week, even Goddard, man, I think he's startable again. I mean, tight end has been really bad. We'll talk about guys like Mark Andrews, who just has been really terrible, but I think Goddard's a guy you can trust. First game back last week, three for 67. We'll take that. You know, if you get a tight end score and you seven, eight points, like with more upside, with some touchdown equity in that offense, I think that's pretty good. Before we move to Brown, I just want to see what you think. What about Devontae Smith, man? Like, it's been awesome. Where do you think he just, where does he go next year? Like what fantasy wise, 12 man league, half point PPR, like, yeah. what are you pulling the trigger on him? What do you think? Skinny Batman. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> AJ Brown swole Batman, Devontae skinny Batman. That's I, what they call themselves. I like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know that his ceiling is that much higher than what he's at now for as long as AJ Brown's also there and Dallas Goddard. And what Devontae's been this year, it it's he's kind of been all over the board. Like week one, he had zero catches, but then he's had these huge weeks, and then he's had some in between weeks. So I, I think that's what you're gonna get with him next year, but that's still worthy of a. Uh, fourth round, late third, fourth round pick, late third. All right. I was going to say like me, I was going to say like late fourth, early fifth. Well, we'll revisit this next year, but he's got upside. He had a, I mean, he, the amount of people, I don't even know what he scored last week, he scored two touchdowns. Right. I mean, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a guy that's probably on a lot of fantasy championship teams too. Um, so what about thick Batman, big Batman, swole, Batman. swole, Batman, <laughs> swole, Batman. What about him? He's next up on our list here. AJ Brown popped up as questionable with a knee injury. I mean, before you get into it, I think if he is healthy, you don't ask questions, but let's find out if he is healthy. What do you think, Tom? You're exactly right. It, it sounds like the Eagles just kind of sat some of their key players today. Uh, we'll talk, we'll get to Miles Sanders as well. Very similar situation. None of the reports I read were concerned at all. Um, and this was a classic. They just tell us, oh, his knee's sore. They don't give us anything more than that, which sometimes just means there's not a true injury. There's just soreness, like played a hard game. It's a long season. He's just sore. I don't see this as a, as a concern at the moment whatsoever. I imagine he'll practice in a limited or full capacity through the remainder of the week. If, if he doesn't, then we'll, we'll dive into this more on, on Twitter and TikTok and things like that. But at this time, I'm not concerned. You're so young and hip, Tom. TikTok, Instagram, all these new things. If I told you in the beginning of the year, you would have a fantasy TikTok, you would have been like, what the hell's TikTok? <laughs> Believe me. I, I think you spelled it like tac tac tic. Well, I don't even know how you spell it. I still it, don't know how to use the damn thing. I promise <laughs> you that. <laughs> Your videos come right up on my For You page. I'm like, all right, that's it. That's Tom. All right. So I'm not really that worried about AJ Brown. But to our next guy, we are worried about Lamar Jackson. And you gave us the heads up last week's show, even the week before. Hurt his knee, which we already knew. No practice today on Wednesday. And again, reasonably so. You've had a lot of concern with him. ESPN is projecting him to play but we won't talk about ESPN and, and their doings, but I feel like you're going to say he's not going to play, or I don't want to, I don't want to step on your toes here. What do you think about Jackson this week? He did not practice today, which, which is not good. And you're right. I, I I've been pessimistic about him since this injury and, and someone clowned me on Twitter last week for saying that Minshew is a better play than Lamar Jackson for week 16. And guess what? Minshew had 29 something points. And like I predicted, Jackson didn't play. So whoever that guy is, yeah, how'd that go? Uh, welcome to the fantasy world. Once, once, once you start getting more of a following, there's going to be that that five percent of people that are literally there to clown you. But oh, I know, I enjoy it actually. Yeah. Um. So like we've talked about the past several weeks, the PCL is it's a major injury for the type of player that Lamar Jackson is because he's so agile, he changes direction so quickly. Yes, you can play without a fully intact PCL. You can play with a partial tear to the PCL but not the type of game that Lamar Jackson plays. It's the PCL is so responsible. It, it, it's somewhat responsible for knee stability, not like the ACL, but still has its stability role. 
but also that proprioception that we're always talking about, or that's your body's awareness of where your limbs are in space without looking at it. So that the proprioception is what gives an athlete the ability to cut on a dime and change direction and not even think about it. With this type of injury, that confidence to change directions declines and he might take a millisecond longer to change directions. And that, that's everything in this league. So I, if he's playing this week, I'm not starting him. I'm with you. I'm out on him. I mean, I think it's going to be Huntley again, just from listening to everything that you have to say, but I wouldn't start him either. I mean, they've been in shambles. I mean, even Andrews, I've been, I've honestly been really adamant about Andrews, Tom. Like I've been saying, just play him. He's Mark Andrews. Just play him. I, I don't know. Championship, it's going to be hard. If you do have him on your team, I think he's hard to trust. Only another, or only 45 yards last week. Their passing game is in shambles. Their running game, again, it's like a flip of a coin, man. I wish it was one of them, but it's not. I mean, there was a report today that said uh, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards will have no snap counts this week, but, like, who's going to get the workload? Like, Gus had 11 last week. J.K. had 12. Huntley ran 11 times, like, can you trust any of these guys, Tom? I don't, I don't know that I can. I don't know that there's any better options than Mark Andrews, so I would still <laughs> roll with him. <laughs> um, it's hard. You could probably trust JK. I don't know that I would trust Edwards because to me, Edwards seems more touchdown dependent. Um, yeah. I feel just like for the past several years, that offense has been the RB1. It's pretty reliable every week. The RB2, which has been Gus, it's like, if he scores, great. If he doesn't score, meh, not so great. Mark Andrews, and then <laughs> they're missing Rashad Bateman. That's going to be an interesting conversation for next year. But I'm worried about this game. I want minimal exposure to it in fantasy and DFS. Divisional game against the Steelers. Low projection, 35 and a half. I think you guys should be That's really careful. That's an under game. That, yeah. I mean, Only that 35 and a half. Super low, but you got to be careful that you play from this game. And guy that came to mind, just so we're not all talking negative, just a replacement. We'll talk a little bit later about him. Tyler Algier comes to mind if you're looking for another running back that's just safe, been consistently good, really took over that backfield. But we'll talk about some possible replacements later. But overall, some serious pessimism when we're talking about the Ravens. Okay. I don't know if we want to say this is pessimism or optimism. <laughs> Being from the New Jersey, New York area, I would say this is optimism. But Mike White, uh, his ribs were injured, got cleared. Looks like he's poised to be the QB one and with looks like Zach Wilson's not even going to be active for this game after a freaking pitiful 19 to three loss to Jacksonville. It is ugly out there, man. And, and is Mike White going to be the savior? What do you think this week? Well, they could sign you and you could play. You're not too far. Might be better off 45 <laughs> minutes to the stadium. I'll be right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mike White's back. He's starting. Uh, we've talked a whole lot about how the ribs function with the throwing motion. So the ribs are connected to the thoracic spine. The thoracic spine is your upper and mid back rotates a whole lot during a throw to generate the throw. So yes, he's cleared to play, but in two weeks, his ribs are not fully healed. They're probably healed enough that they don't hurt that much, but they're not fully healed. So there could definitely be some stiffness in those ribs and that could impact how much range he has when he goes to throw the ball and, and, and the velocity as well, because who would, what, what muscles attach to those ribs, the big ones involved in throwing the lats, the pecs, the obliques, they all attach right on the ribs. And the, there there's other muscles. I mean, the leg is where you get most of your power from, but as far as the torso goes, those muscles are the big ones in the throwing motion. So there's definitely some, some concern for him. Is he a hundred percent doubtful? I mean, we saw Herbert struggle a lot in his first game after the rib injury. We saw Aaron Rodgers struggle a lot in his first game after the rib injury. So I, I don't love my, I, I like him more than Zach Wilson. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I think everybody does. <laughs> but I don't love him this week. Um, I don't know. This is great for his receiving options either. I mean, I'm just thinking like Herbert had his worst game of the season. I think Rodgers had his worst game of the season at, in their first game after the rib injury too. If the quarterback struggles, the receivers are going to struggle. Of course. Does what was that Brock Purdy injury a couple of weeks ago? Was that ribs too, or was that something else to was as well? Um, and Tom, I remember gonna... you saying because I, I I had Ayuk and I was talking to you about how I'm going to play Ayuk and he's been a plug and play for me. And you literally warned me. You said, "Well, the deep shots are probably not going to be there. They're going to look to kind of manage the game, give it to CMC." Look, and you were dead right. Ayuk had a terrible game. So I have here that Carrot Wilson is a must start, but 
I'm actually starting to reconsider that a little bit because like you said, these, these projections that you've had with the rib injuries have been spot on. And if he's not going to be able to throw the ball down the field to really open it up and they play a real conservative, safe type of game, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from Garrett Wilson. Yeah, it's a really tough one because he's been so good, but, and it's not him. That's It's not Garrett Wilson that's injured. It's his quarterback. Right. So it, it's it's tough, I, but I would say if, if you're like 50-50 Garrett Wilson and someone else, this could be the deciding factor to go with that someone else. Okay. And if you don't have options, you just go with Garrett and hope for a bunch of receptions and see. Tom, you asked me earlier if I could play better quarterback uh, for the Jets. Last week, Zonovan Knight, six carries for negative two yards. Tom, can you do better than that? Um, I want <laughs> to say yes, but uh, the reality is probably no. Uh, not in the Zach Wilson-led offense, at least. I always ask my friends, right. like, if you got, if I gave you, uh, you know, injuries aside, let's make believe you didn't get hurt. If I gave you 20 NFL carries, how many yards are you getting? I, I would, I say like 12. I might fall forward once. <laughs> If I if I find a hole and hit a hole as hard as I can, I'll go get a yard or two. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not much. I mean, it's funny. Like, I used to be an okay athlete, and like now I'm so freaking slow compared to what I used oh, to yeah. be. And it's like, where did this come from? Like, I was in a basketball league over the summer, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't move. What the hell happened? <laughs> like, I got I, I I'm in pretty good shape. I just completely lost my speed. When I'm coaching basketball, I like to sometimes run with the kids. And I can keep up, but not for nearly as long. There's like four minutes. I'm like, yeah, all right, let's get some water, boys. That'll be it for us. <laughs> but that's not a good week for him. I know that you're going to touch on night a little bit later. Listen, Jets have a very winnable game. It's a must win. They play the Seahawks, projected to be a really close game. And just before we wrap this up, Tom, just a fun little question. Do you think Zach Wilson will ever see an NFL snap as a starter again? I hope so because he really does have an electric arm. He just something in between his ears needs to get straightened out. And I see him as somebody who really needs to go to a quarterback centric coach. Yeah. So could you imagine him like being Patrick Mahomes backup? Right. And learning. See, I'll take the, that. The, yeah. That that's what I see him for, being like for, a high for, end backup. Yeah, yeah for a year or two or wherever Sean Payton ends up coaching, like that would be an awesome coach for him. He can't go to a team that has a defensive minded head coach. Like he needs to go to one of these quarterback whispering coaches. Right. We'll see how that plays out. And same for our next guy, Aaron Rodgers. So this week is on the injury report with a knee injury. He's probably had (laughs) right now. This guy is poor Aaron Rodgers, probably dealing with five. Didn't he have a a broken finger and and his, I mean, he has had so much going on too many to count, but what's the deal with Rodgers this week going into our championships? It kind of like AJ Brown from what I'm hearing. Doesn't sound like much, probably just giving him a little bit of rest. Um, Just again, that vague knee soreness that where they don't give us a diagnosis Oftentimes, it just means there's really not a diagnosis to give. He's just sore. Um, not concerned right now. All right. Don't let the Packers get hot. They, I think I'm pretty sure they decide their own fate, right? I think if the Packers win the next two games, they won this past week. And I think if they win the next two, they still have a chance to get in the playoffs. So I can never, as bad as Rodgers has been from a fantasy standpoint this year, and honestly, as an NFL quarterback, he's been very average. I'm never going to count them out. Um, we'll talk about some of their options in a minute. I think if you have Lazard, you play him, especially with Watson, who we'll discuss in a minute. No practice today. We'll get to him. Jones, you play. Dylan's been really hot lately, man. He's been, you know, labeled a bust in the beginning of the year. I know that I said he was a bust because he, he was he was terrible, but he's been hot last four weeks, averaging 18.4 points per game. That's RB1 numbers. 18 points. It's not one week, two weeks. That's the last four weeks. That's pretty solid. He's been running hot with touchdowns. I think he scored a touchdown in every week of the last four. So if he doesn't get in the end zone, you might be looking at more like eight to nine, but he's been pretty good. And I don't see why he can't do it again this week. I trust him to play the Vikings. I think he can get in the, you know, in the end zone again, in the red zone again. So I like him this week, but let's go to Christian Watson because he didn't practice today. I think he played, what did he play about half the game? What was that Monday, Monday? I think they were the Monday night game uh, or Sunday night game, you Sunday. know, came out there Sunday night. Yeah. Um, but no practice today. So what are we looking at for Christian Watson? The reports I'm hearing is a hip flexor injury, and I believe those reports were based off trying to read his lips. 
when he was on the sideline. Um, it looked like he said hip flexor. Didn't practice today. The the hip flexor is it's a it's a group of muscles. There's there's the psoas and the, and the iliopsoas is the main one, but there's there's multiple. Um, there's also the rectus femoris, which is the one that um, attaches up into the labrum and actually becomes one of the quad muscles. So they're really strong, powerful muscles, and their job is to propel the leg forward when we're walking or sprinting, very powerfully when we're sprinting. Uh, but also when our one leg is behind like in our stride, it gets stretched. So when a muscle is injured, it doesn't like to get stretched very much. So what you'll see with somebody who has a hip flexor injury is they'll significantly shorten their stride so that leg doesn't get nearly as far behind so that muscle doesn't get nearly as much stretch, stretch on it. Whenever we shorten a stride, that's like going from, from a big bicycle to a little one. It's a lot more work to try to go as fast. You're not going to go as fast. Um, so this type of injury could really limit his, his speed, his explosiveness. He's been getting down the field well. He's been running really, really well with big plays. That could be what is not available if he's playing with this type of injury. All that said, wide receivers average missing 1.4 games and see absolutely no decline in fantasy production. Now, that's not a huge sample size, though. So with, with, with these smaller sample sizes, we really got to take them case by case. His is, he's not practicing today, which tells me it's, it's not nothing. He didn't play the whole second half of a big game. Tells me it's not nothing. So I do think that he is, if he plays, he's, he's going to be a little bit impacted by this, particularly with any kind of deep balls. And that's his bread and butter. He's been getting open deep. Rodgers even missed him. Not wide open, but he had a step or two. Oh, for like a yeah. 60 yarder. Rogers yeah, missed just missed him. And, uh, you know, like you said, they average missing 1.4 games. So if you just look at that small sample size, it looks like you might not even play this week if you just look at that. So that could be, that could be a big thing. And if that's the case, I think if you have Alan Lazard, if, he, if he's on your team and you, somehow, you survived with him on a championship team, I think you fire him up, not necessarily because of. Great talent, but opportunity. Rodgers trusts him. I wouldn't trust anybody else in this passing game. I think there's going to be people that try to get cute that, oh, well, Romeo Dobbs or Robert Tunyon or Randall Cott. You just don't know. I think you play Lazard. You have no idea who their second option is going to be, who runs hot that day. You play Dylan. You play um, – I'm losing my Jones, mind here. Aaron uh, Jones. <laughs> I was going to say AJ. Yeah, I was going to say AJ Jones. Uh, uh, Jones. And just one more thing on on Watson. I like to do this and look at numbers. He's been having a second half, man. Last six weeks, and this is a crazy thing to extrapolate, but over the last six weeks, 20.8 points per game. It's wild. You extrapolate that, Tom, over a season, and you take that like as last year, the amount of points he has, and this is a season, he would have finished last year as wide receiver two, only behind Cooper Cup. By wow. 14 games, medium sample size, six weeks, but that just shows you how good he's been, but we got to monitor the injury and we got to see how things go for him there. Okay. On to, I think it's our last quarterback, Tom Colt McCoy cleared concussion today, right? He seems like not so much yep. to talk about here. He's okay. Yep. Yeah. He's good to go. He'll be starting. That is good for Deandre Hopkins. All right. Sounds good. Good for Hopkins. I think you play him only one catch last week, but <laughs> on 10 targets, 10 targets. Absolutely insane. I was oh going to say, Tom, Tom can, if I target you 10 times in the NFL, yeah, I think you might catch more than one, but he commands 10 targets. You play him. I wouldn't trust Dorch, to be honest with you. They're just a bad offense. I don't want that risk. Connor, man, he never comes off the field. Ride the hot hand. Take him in DFS. A 91% snap share last week. Plays a bottom five run defense this week. Fire him up. We're not worried about him. Not worried about Hopkins, especially with Colt McCoy clearing concussion protocol. Dude, okay. I had one semifinals that I lost by three, and I had Hopkins. I'm like, oh, oh come on. Just be – you don't even be yourself. Just be bad, Hopkins. Give me a bad game. Not a one for four. Give me, give me a four for 45, and you win, right? That's all oh, I needed. Painful. I mean, the amount of duds last week, Devontae oh, Adams, Stefan Diggs. Well, yeah, we put out um, a little Twitter poll. Like, yeah. which one of these star players, bad game, hurt you the most? There's a lot. And I think there's going to be some interesting championships. I mean, the guy that had the best team in our league had 
Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs, three huge busts. And oh, Tony. man. And Pollard, who's been great all year, but I think he only, quote unquote, had like 11 or 12 or something like that. And he had that. I mean, he or not Dak, someone, but that was tough. Tough news. As is this, man, Derrick Henry. Could this have come at a worse time? I mean, he's doubtful this week. They play tomorrow on Thursday. He's got a hip injury. Rabel, clearly, uh, their head coach, clearly doesn't care about fantasy football, either that or he's playing against uh, Derek Henry this week. But what do we think? He looks like he's probably going to sit, right? Yeah, it's in, uh, it's kind of a vague hip injury. He's listed as doubtful. Um, they're, they're not giving us anything detailed about the injury, so it's kind of hard to to break it down, but it sounds like that if they need, if, if there's any meaning to their week 17 game, they probably would play. But we know that both the Titans and the Jaguars seasons rest on that week 18 matchup. So there's no reason for either of them to play any of their studs. Um, that sucks for people who have been really relying on Henry to carry them all season. And he's been great. Tom, you remember the beginning of the year, and this probably wound up closer than we thought. I was, I was like, yo, Henry over Cook. You're like, no, yeah. like Cook yeah. over I, We got to look at the number. I'm sure it's pretty close. I think, I think you're, you're bit, winning. But... I looked at it the other day. Uh, Henry was pretty far ahead of Dalvin Cook. I'm in your head, Tom. You're thinking about that stuff. I love it. <laughs> I don't have numbers um, as far as point totals, but Henry is RB4. Let's see what Cook is. It's probably in like the 10, 11 range. Nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah, he's right there. Still, still both solid picks, but like you said, man, Titans are playing for nothing. I mean, it's, it's their Super Bowl next week against the Jags, the winner of that game. What wins the division, I think, and goes on yeah. to the playoffs. I mean, yeah. dude, this week, the Titans, they might not score. Their implied total is 13 points for the Titans. Like anybody oh, at home, boy. not that you're tempted, but don't you dare. Don't even think about playing a Titans player. Don't get cute. It's a bad idea. It's a worse idea than anything than trying to, to fight a kangaroo or fight, fist fight a moose. What? You can. Th- th- I'm just coming up with. St- there are bet. There are so many better ideas out there than starting a Titans player. You won't win. It's a bad idea. And Titans too, without seven defensive starters. I mean, that game is going to be ugly. I think the Cowboys defense who they play. You got them. They could oh, win your league yeah. themselves. They could put up twenty points themselves defensively. Um, that game might be a rout by halftime. It could be bad. And and I just learned a little bit earlier the Cowboys have a lot to play for as well in terms of seeding and playoff. Well, even making the playoff, but but seeding and all that stuff. So the Cowboys might really put on a rout. I'm just worried about that game, and and I'm worried about every single Titan. Traylon Burks. I mean, like like you said, there's no reason to play Henry. He's a he's a pro. He's a vet. He doesn't need the reps. Week 18, he's going to come out fresh. They're going to turn it to him 35 times, and that's going to be it. I mean, th- their quarterback could use the reps, Willis, but I think this is going to be a joke of a game. Agreed. All right. A couple left here, Tom. This is a big one. Looks like he's going to be okay, I think, but I'll let you talk about it. Austin Eckler, the number one fantasy RB in, uh, in half-point PPR, but today on Wednesday, he was limited with a knee injury. Um, are we concerned with that at all? This is just the week of teams – just like saying, oh, this guy has a vague knee injury, apparently. The, <laughs> the same story as the other guys we've talked about, just kind of limited with knee soreness. Nothing else yeah. reported about it. Um, he didn't appear to get injured in the game the other night. He had a very good game. Um, if this does end up lingering into into the week, this type of injury could impact how well he can cut and his, his top end sprinting. But it's also the kind of thing that when they get warmed up, if they flush some of that soreness out, they feel fine. So at this time, not a, not a concern, especially since he did practice a little bit today, but we'll keep an eye on it. All right. And with that said, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Joshua Kelly get another 10 touches or so. I think he had around that last week, but it doesn't worry me as an Eckler owner. Eckler's the, Eckler is one of the best in the league, obviously. Still gets in the red zone, still gets the touches down by the goal line catches passes. I mean, their offense is him. And as a frustrated Gerald Everett and Mike Williams owner this year, man, it's just in times of pressure. And I know the Chargers offensive line is not good, but Herbert looks for Keenan, 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 Keenan. No Cal, Tom, just Keenan. Where's Cal? Keenan. It's just Keenan, 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 Keenan Allen. 14 targets last week. He's another guy, man, that, that could easily win you a championship just by the amount of volume that he has. 14 targets. Again, next highest was Mike Williams 
with only four. But to Mike Williams here, he's a hit or miss play, but I think he's a guy you have to play because the second you sit Mike Williams, he scores 22 on your bench and you're pulling your hair out. So I don't see how you sit him, but uh, I think you play Mike, you play Eckler, um, obviously Keenan Allen. And listen, maybe you can pull some strings with, with Joshua Palmer, but it's tough, man. That offensive line has not given her. And I, I've been a critic of Herbert saying that he's overrated, but his line has not helped. No, he's all. great. Um, real quick. Do you, do you think that um, Herbert and Keenan go to Good Burger after the games? I think they do. Yeah. That, that, that tops, uh, <laughs> that tops Stafford and cup getting, getting breakfast or lunch together every day. They go to Good Burger. <laughs> For sure. For you young listeners, it's Keenan and Cal, right? Welcome, Ken- welcome, yeah. welcome to Good Burger. Home of the Good Burger. <laughs> Can I take your order? Can I take your order? Oh, what a, I might go watch that tonight. I think it's on Netflix. That the Amanda, the Amanda show and Zoe 101. I saw the other day on there. I'm like, yep, <laughs> dialed me right back up to 2005. Classic. Oh, All my right. goodness. All right, Tom. Time to talk about my boy. I'm getting excited in my seat over here. Tony Pollard. And I saw the injury. I'm like, not Tony Pollard. No, no. Didn't practice. So it's a thigh injury. Didn't practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They played tomorrow. Of course, Jerry Jones comes out and says he's totally fine. I'm not worried about him. He's playing, but I'll turn to you, the doctor of physical therapy, Tom. I, I literally trust you over Jerry Jones and Pete Carroll and just about every, just about every <laughs> other coach in football <laughs> slash owner. But what do you got on Tony Pollard, man? Well, Jerry may not be concerned, but it's a little concerning when your player doesn't practice in any capacity at all through the, the week. day before a game, especially, right? Yeah especially a game where your team's already clinched the playoffs, but, you know, we just talked about how they're probably going to roll over the Titans. So they don't really need to risk any of their big assets that are somewhat injured, they, but they do still need to win the game, so they have to play their good players. So the, it, it's been described as a thigh injury. Usually that's a quad injury, um, which is quad's one of the strongest most powerful muscles that we have outside of the glutes and it's really involved in running creating power acceleration which is what tony pollard is to me makes him stand out as he just goes from zero to 100 so fast sprinting cutting all of that a quad injury could impact it's going to slow down all of those motions so i could see him being limited and, and not being at his full capacity if he does play Running backs, historically, it's a pretty good sample size. Average a decline of 1.8 fantasy points from their pre-injury baseline, which isn't huge, but it's it's something, especially when you have another running back in your backfield who is also productive and is not on the injury report. Right. I'm really worried about that game, and, and I'll ask you the same thing if you're worried. I'm just worried that, you know, with the Titans not playing anybody, with their seven defensive starters not playing. Like, I'm worried that, and and of course, the game's going to go totally different because we're saying this. I'm worried that it's like Cowboys at halftime, 28-3. And then not that they pull their starters, but they just really, really take their foot off the gas. I, I'm really, really concerned about that game, man. And in my family league, I have, <laughs> I have Zeke, Pollard, and C.D. Lamb. <laughs> I have all of them. I'm like, I don't, I mean, I don't know how you could sit them, but it's going to be tough. Um, Tom, you want to have some fun here real quick? I like fun. Let's have some fun. I'd like to extrapolate data over a season. And this sample size is pretty big because I can't get off the Tony Pollard train over the last eight weeks, which is a significant sample size, about half the year, eight weeks. Pollard is averaging 23.1 points per game and half point PPR. That is insane. Not bad at all. Extrapolate that over a season lands him at 392 points. I'd take 392. Who was the RB one last year, Tom? Um, you sound like Patrick and (laughs) Spider. just about a consensus first round pick this year. Oh, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. JT. Last year, he, RB1 finished the year with 353 points. Pollard's number is 392. Year before, Derrick Henry was the RB1, 314 points. So I'm just saying, Tony Pollard, man, that guy is special. Put some respect on his name. He's elite. I just want to see a world one time where Zeke is, is not there, and he's still running behind this awesome Cowboys offensive line, and he's getting everything. My goodness gracious. That's, that's first-round pick material next year for sure. See how it pans out in the offseason. Isn't he a free agent? 
I think that he is. I'm pretty sure he is. And That's interesting. I think if they want him, they're going to have to pay for it. Oh, and for sure. Zeke's getting old. Although we say that every year, Zeke's older, and he just still <laughs> torches us. Or if you have him, he just still gets in. It gets in on the one yard line. Like it pisses me off. Pollard will run for like 60 yards down to the one. And this week, actually, specifically, Pollard looked at the coach and and the staff. He's like, no, oh, no, yeah. I'm staying on. Did you see yeah, that? He's yeah, like, no, yeah, no, 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 no. And here comes Zeke, one yard touchdown, walks right in. I'm like, come on, he, man. He's just like, so good at that. Like Zeke does, he pretty much never loses yeah. yards. It's Zeke, like, Zeke is phenomenal on the goal line, one of the best historically, I would say. But like, let Pollard walk in one time. Come on, man. So, all right, Tom, we got three left. We're rolling right through here. This one pretty significant uh, in terms of the fantasy world and its implications. Antonio Gibson, questionable this this week with a foot and knee injury. Is that right, Tom? Foot and knee. Yes. All right. So what do we got on Gibson for this week? Uh, but again, vague reports. That's kind of how Washington does it. They don't really give us much detail. A lot of knees this week. A lot of knees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's had this foot injury for a little while now, though. They didn't tell us exactly when it happened, but they told us kind of retrospectively that he'd been dealing with it. If you look at his stats, he hasn't had a double digit fantasy game since week 11. So I wonder if this has already been impacting his production like a foot is pretty significant for a running back. Any kind of foot injury can impact your ability to cut, which is a huge part of running. And the knee would be pretty similar. It's going to affect your cutting and, and your sprinting and your acceleration. So each of these injuries independently would be a concern for me. In combination, they're a double concern, especially since he has not been playing well lately. Um, I, I can't imagine trusting him in the championship game. No way. I hope that you have better options. <laughs> so when I was talking implications with, with this team, I was more talking about how it would affect Brian Robinson. So he was my sit last week just because he played against the 49ers, but that's in the past. And right now, I think Robinson, especially if Gibson doesn't play, is a great candidate for, for a really, really, really strong week. Last week, even against the Niners, didn't do great in terms of efficiency, but 22 carries. Um, I just love watching him run. He's a bruiser. He's just like a, a thick like grinder. I <laughs> never thought I might say that on a, on a podcast. He's a thick grinder, but he is. That's what he does. <laughs> like, I think he could be next year, like looking ahead, like a sneaky, like safe, like RB2 pick, like almost like a David Montgomery. We're like, oh, I don't want David Montgomery. Where's the upset? But he's yeah. a guy that like gives you like that floor RB2 numbers, like safe. He feels good. But this week they play against the Browns who, I looked at all of their running statistics. You know, they're first off, they're ranked 25th against the run. Um, they're bad in every run stat. So listen, I could see Brian Robinson getting it 30 times this week if Gibson is out, and and they want to take the ball out of the quarterback's hands and just try not to make mistakes. And Robinson's a good guy for that, running in between the tackles. And I know this might contradict what I just said about the quarterback, but I think Dotson could be a sneaky play in championships this week, maybe as a flex play, if you don't have any better options, had nine targets this, or this past week, obviously Terry McLaurin is going to usually lead the show there. We've seen a little bit of a fade off from Curtis Samuel, but I think yeah, Dotson definitely. is a guy that like might get in the end zone for you. He's so athletic. He's having a great rookie campaign. I, I wouldn't mind playing him this week. So that's something to look at right there. And I think Robinson is an absolute, you put him in your lineup if there's no Gibson. So, yeah, so this is actually going to be a nice segue to our next player because right now I'm deciding between Dotson or Lockett for my flex spot. And if we look at Dotson, he started off the season with his three out of his first four games, which is when Wentz was the quarterback, double digits fantasy points with four touchdowns in those three games. And then I know Wentz just started playing again last week, but Dotson has three straight double-digit fantasy point games with touchdowns in all of them. So this guy gets in the end zone. He he's, gets an okay target share. Last three games, nine, six, nine targets. He's got the talent. There's no question about that. Yeah. It's the thing that concerns me a little bit is you never know what you're getting with Carson Wentz. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's what the hell is this guy doing? How is he an NFL quarterback? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, they do, they do have three weapons there. They have McLaren, they have Samuel and they have Dotson and it's, you just and they don't... lean on Robinson. Of course they're going to lean right. on him. Right. You just don't know. I, I feel less confident starting Dotson than I would, as far as like a target share goes, than I would with Lockett. But then Lockett's got this hand injury that we're about to talk about. It's a perfect segue, Tom. Uh, talk us through it. I mean, he broke his finger and 
broke his hand. Not or his broke finger. His, his. That's right. You said that it wasn't his finger. It was a uh, something M- metacarpal. Okay, second gonna, metacarpal. I knew that one. Okay, you just didn't give me time. Um, okay. P. Carroll said he did everything today, so that's his extensive injury report. But <laughs> what what is, what is the doctor physical therapy therapy thing? Talk talk yeah. through your talk through your pain here, Tom, or your decision between Lockett and uh, and Dotson. Talk about Lockett a little. Well, last week I'm thinking there's no way in hell that Lockett plays before you know two at least two or three weeks. But all the reports I saw today were full practice, catching the ball, no pain, which is absolutely amazing. I'm like the the fracture's not healed, but they can put uh, hardware in there that can stabilize it. So I mean, the fracture's not going to get any worse. But it's only been a week. I would think there would still be a lot of swelling, which would impact your hand dexterity, your ability to grip, which would impact catching. And I would think there'd be a lot of pain, which would also impact catching. Somehow they found a way to reduce that or eliminate the pain in in total. So I'm going to be closely monitoring practice reports tomorrow and and Friday. I'm really interested to see what they say. If he continues to look good, I'm hoping that some of the beat reporters will put out videos like they often do. And so I can see for myself, is he really catching the ball with his hands or is he catching with his body more? Right. But as of now, I'm probably going to go with Lockett over Dotson. I'm with that. I think I just came to that conclusion to go with Lockett. Like Dotson does have the upside, but the really low floor and I think Lockett has the upside with a higher floor. So I'm looking out yeah, at his numbers. Definitely. 11 double-digit fantasy points in 11 of 14 games this year. And one of them that he didn't, he had eight. Like, he's just been so consistent. And last four weeks, he's played target share 9, 9, 12, and 7. I mean, that's... You can't ask for much more than that. That's great. I mean, as the a, guy that's so flex, many of us. Yeah, that's... You eat that up. I mean... Seahawks haven't been good, and they do face a pretty tough test this week against the Jets secondary. Both teams really need a win, but I could see them relying on on their guys and the guys that they trust like Lockett. Um, and he's still, even though he missed a game, still wide receiver 12 on the year, man. I think I think you slide him right back in there, Tom. And DK, just still a savage, still just a man child. He's just, he's just so huge. And and he had a decent week last week. I think he was like six for 80 or something like that. And then I think if guys, if you got Ken Walker, I mean, I'm riding with him as well in one of my leagues. I think you got to play him. I describe him kind of as an ineffective workhorse right now. Like 26 carries, 107, fine. I mean, whatever. But we've seen him run hot with touchdowns. We've seen him that he could get involved in the passing game a little bit. I think you play him. And, and Tom, for you, man, I, I think you give Lockett a go. I'm feeling that. So Agreed. let us know what those videos tell us about how he's catching the ball and stuff. But yeah, I like him this I'll week. Be, I'll be looking for him. I know you will. All right. Our last injury here is Chris Olave, who has a hamstring injury, and he was limited today on Wednesday. Um, Putting together a good campaign, man. He could easily be the offensive rookie of the year. I mean, the Saints have been so bad in the passing game, and I think he helps it, but they face your birds this week, man. A really tough, solid Eagles secondary with Slay and Bradbury and Epps and all those guys. But um, what do you think about Olave? Limited practice today after missing week 16 with a hamstring injury. And remember, with the hamstring injuries, they imp- we're starting to see that they impact different positions differently. Like running backs are not that impacted. Receivers are quite impacted, especially deep threat receivers. And the reason for that is the, the function of the hamstring. It, it's hugely involved with running and sprinting, but its involvement increases dramatically at the top end of speed of a sprint, meaning more force is is coming through the hamstring that it's activating harder and harder as we run faster and faster. And a deep threat like Chris Olave actually has the time and the space to get up to that top flight speed, which is why we see these receivers are the ones that have these hamstring injuries the most. So I'm a little concerned that he won't be able to, to get deep like he normally does, especially going against Darius Slay and, and Bradbury, who are two of the best in the game. And that Eagles front uh, pass rush is just unbelievable too. Like yeah. Dalton's going to be on his butt all all day, and we see a decline of two point seven points for receivers in their first game back from hamstring injury. That's compared to their pre injury baseline. So there's there's reason for concern here, but he's also just one play away from a big touchdown. Sure. 
Um, so again, tough situation. And again, like I forget who it was we talked about before, but I could see this as like, if you are 50, 50 with Olave and someone else, sure. Let this be the reason to go with someone else. But if, if you're not 50, 50, you know, Olave is a typical starter for you and it's not even close from the next guy, then stick with him. Fair enough, Tom. All right. So that wraps up our injuries. Got a couple more segments here, Tom, for our final championship week. Got a quick mailbag question. Got a couple bold predictions. And then our classic start sit. So here is our mailbag question. And I got a little sick to my stomach looking at it because it is a, a painfully difficult and bad situation for this person. But listen, it's a start sit. They have Juju and Gallup. And they want to know who to start this week. My answer is just none of the above and don't play anybody in that position. Leave it, <laughs> leave it blank, leave it open. I don't know, uh, Tom, you're making a face over there. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it first and we might not see eye to eye on this. I think from what we were talking about earlier, but for Gallup, I, I just hate this game because of the script. I think it could get really ugly. If Gallup scores in the first quarter, second quarter, great. But the Cowboys might just be routing them. They might be, be crushing the Titans. I mean, with Gallup last week, 13.6, which is fine. Two weeks prior to that, he was 1.2 and 6.0. That's tough. Doesn't get much better for Juju, though. I mean, last week was pretty bad, but Juju's prior two weeks were good. 22.4 and 16.8. It's just you never know what you're going to get with the Chiefs, with the Kelsey show and with Mahomes running around. I mean, it's really tough. I mean, I think the Chiefs are going to have to score a ton against the Bron. I mean, not that they have to, but I think they're going to score a ton against the Broncos. So if you can't find any other options, I'm going for the upside and I'm playing Juju. But I feel like you don't like Juju, Tom, from what you were saying earlier. What do you think about this one? I don't, but you know who I like less than Juju? <laughs> Michael, Michael Gallup. Gallup. <laughs> it's so bad. He's just clearly not at 100% after his ACL yet. And he remember, he came back seven and a half months after surgery. That is insanely fast. And he's going to get back to 100%. I love him for next season, especially with how bad of a season he's had this year. He'll probably fall in, in the, the uh, ADP. So I think he's a, he's a great he, – he prospects well for next season, but he's just clearly not himself yet. Um. And like, I agree with you. Like, it's going to be a route. If he scores in the first or second quarter, awesome. But you're probably not going to have four quarters of him playing. Right. Juju, there's at least that Mahomes magic upside. Like, he could easily throw for 450 yards. Although that game could be a route, too. I mean, Denver yeah, Broncos, stinks. Yeah. That game could be over real fast as well. With no so, more Nathaniel Hackett. Praise. Oh, they get the interim coach bump. They yeah. might act, Denver, uh, Denver might actually win. <laughs> Denver, Denver, Denver money line instantly on every yeah that's such a classic thing like in term coach comes in everybody plays hard for him they love it it's like an inspired week um, it's, it happens all the time it's so it's a real thing this, it's absolutely real so yeah. uh, all right, I'm definitely sold on Juju now as far okay. as this goes <laughs> don't all like him though he might, he might still be your sit later or something like that but start Juju over Michael Gallup for sure okay that was a fun one um, and, and <laughs> Sorry that we're insulting your team. We just feel like there's better options for, for whoever the question came in from there. Okay. All right, Tom. I have two bold predictions here just for fun. Um, how many do you have? Just so you have one? No, I have two. You have two. All right. Let's go back and forth. I'll do one. You do one. And then let's rotate. So this one I think is pretty bold. So my boy, all of our boys, if you have him, he's your boy. Justin Jefferson, right? What an amazing season. He is 208 yards away from breaking the all-time record for receiving yards in a season. I think it was Calvin Johnson's record. My bold prediction is that he gets it this week. 208 or 209 more yards this week for Justin Jefferson, and I think he's going to solidify himself, if he hasn't already, as the 1.1 pick next year. And pretty crazy. Jefferson's on the MVP ticket for the first time. I think he's not going to win the MVP. It would probably still be Hertz or Mahomes or whoever, but... On the MVP ticket now, 14 to 1. I think stars shine bright when they need to. The Vikings need a win here. Justin Jefferson over 208 yards receiving. That's bold. Might be stupid, but it's bold and I'm feeling it. What do you got? I, ho I hope he gets it because, you know, I mean, Calvin Johnson did it in 16 games. So right. 
I, I would like to see if that record is going to fall. I'd like to see it in the same amount of games. And um, that's a great point. And I think Jefferson knows that. Like he wants it to be like, oh, well, it was in an extra game. And Justin Jefferson wants to come and be like, no, like it was in 16 games too. Like I could see it. I could see yeah. it, man. Yeah. I honestly, even though I'm an Eagles fan, he is my pick for the MVP this year. If I had a vote. Really? It's just, yeah. I mean, Hertz is incredible as well. So is Mahomes. Don't get me wrong. But like we saw the Eagles offense still do really, really well the other right, day without right. Hertz. Not not to the same degree as with Hertz. But this Vikings offense is nothing without Justin Jefferson. He makes them go. Yeah. He like he's so, so special. I would absolutely put him as the MVP if I had a vote. Dude, which I'll, I'll, I'll one always day I say, yeah, you're gonna be on the board. I love that. I always say that when they're voting for the MVP, it should truly be, and that they, they of course they think about this. If you take that player off the team, how are they going to perform? And you're right. I mean, Minshew was, they didn't win, but they were still okay. You're right. You take Justin Jefferson away. It's like <laughs> yucky, disgusting. No way. So, all right. Yeah. Be bold, Tom. What do you got for us? All righty. This was one of my preseason league winners, and it's sort of held true. He's been really, he's, I guess he's returned his ADP, but I think this week he really does it. Travis Etienne is going to go for 150 and three touchdowns against a lousy Houston Texans, and he's going to win some people a lot of money. I like it. And we talked about the Jags before and how they really don't have much to play for, but who's their coach? Peterson? Doug Peterson? Yeah. He came out and said that they're not resting anybody. It's another game for them. I like it, Tom. I got Etienne in one of my finals leagues. All right. Here's my next bold prediction, my last one here. Tyler Algier, alluded to earlier in the show, is going to help to bring a fantasy championship to his owners. If you have Tyler Algier, do not even consider sitting him. Last two weeks, 17 carries for a buck 39 and a touchdown. Last week, 18 for 74, adding four catches for 43. He's clearly taken over this backfield. We know that Arthur Smith wants to establish the run, run, run. Falcons could easily be leading this game. They play an awful Cardinals team. Algier last week, 4.1 yards per carry. Patterson only 2.1 yards per carry. My prediction is he scores 17 to 20 points, takes you to a championship trophy. And I got this tweet. I got, I got to tell, I got to appreciate this guy, Jared Smola on, on Twitter. He tweets some really good stuff. I'll promote him a little bit. No problem. Carries inside the five in the last two weeks. Algier four, Patterson one. Like it's been the Algier show where in the beginning of the year, it'd be Patterson on the goal line. Not only is Algier a workhorse, but he's also now getting it in the goal line against the team who they're probably going to beat and be up on a team that likes to establish the run. I'll talk all day about Algier, Tom. I like him this week. I like him too. I think that's a great pick. All right. My last one, Mr. Relevant. He's just been doing it, man. He's been doing it for the Niners, and I think this week he does it for your fantasy team. He's going for 350 and three total touchdowns against the Las Vegas Raiders. There's no stopping this guy, and hopefully until he, he finds my Eagles in the playoffs. Hopefully then he gets <laughs> stopped. But this guy's just been on fire. He's he's making the right decisions. He's got a really good supporting cast, even without Debo. I think this guy is going to get the job done this week. Mr. Irrelevant, Brock freaking Purdy. All right. On to our last segment, Tom. Here we go. Our start sits. The implications have never been higher for the championship, man. This week, I had listen, I have overexposure in this game everywhere I can. It's the Jaguars versus the Bears. Projected total in that game is 52. Okay. My start of the week is going, going back to the well with DJ Chark. Games in a dome. Lions play great there offensively. I think the Bears can keep up. I think they're willing to give up a ton of points as well. Uh, Chark's been excellent in his last three uh, or three of his last four weeks. He did have one bad down game with only one catch. I trust him fully. I think I'm on Ross St. Brown, hits all of his overs. And I think DJ Chark is going to be a guy that could be sneaky, get him into the flex, win a championship with him. My sit this week is a guy who, it's painful for me to say this, I just don't trust him anymore with the Colts being as bad as they are. It's Michael Pittman. Listen, you paid a third-round pick for him. We loved him at the beginning of the year, rightfully so. Um, but we can't look in the past, man. It's over. Last week, four for 39. It's not over for him. Next year, I think he'll still be great and an outstanding football player and asset to fantasy. Last week, though, four for 39. Colts are six-point underdogs against my Giants in, in what's going to be probably a low-scoring game. Giants have everything to play for, and I think that Giants pass rush gets after it, man, and I think they're not going to give much time. 
for Pittman to even get down the field. The Colts are a disaster. So I'm sitting Pittman this week in, in any, any opportunity that I have. So those are my guys, Tom. What a nice landing spot that would be for Gardner Minshew next year. Oh, baby. I can see it already. Somebody yeah. photo, somebody Photoshop him onto the Colts right now. Give me a picture. Show it to us. I mean, that could be fun too, man, because Matt, that would be Matt nice. Ryan didn't get it done. That's for sure. Actually, I would rather see Gardner go to the Jets and um, Garoppolo go to Indianapolis. I just think Gardner in, in the New York area would be so fun. Oh, he would be a fan favorite. He's so much fun. Good. He's slinging the ball. That's what the Jets need. They have they have weapons around him, right? I mean, they got obviously Michael Carter and they have Brees Hall and all these other guys like Elijah Moore, maybe a resurrection of him. Garrett Wilson, a good defense. Like that could be a fun I team. I think they just need someone the media can rally around. Like nobody yeah. gets people happier than Minshew. I think Garoppolo would also be a good fit there just because he's so steady, but yeah. he's not as exciting as Gardner. Seen enough of Zach Wilson in the media. Hey, uh, Zach, you scored three points. You think you let your defense down? No. Okay. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Zach. I appreciate those words. Yeah. Yeah. I need a yeah. change, man. We'll see what happens there. Um, speaking of the Jets, I'm going to start Bam Knight. Uh, for one, it's just a sick name. Um, I know he struggled last week, but Mike White's back. And we talked about how Mike White's throwing could be a little bit limited. But he still opens up the offense more than Zach does. And he, I think he can move the ball better. And they play Seattle, who is not very good at stopping the run. And Bam Knight, he's been good. Other than the last two weeks, no. But the three weeks prior to that, double digits every week. With averaging at, at least four yards to carry, which is, is steady. Solid. So I like him this week. I don't like the guy we just talked about, even though I said I liked him more than Michael Gallup. <laughs> I don't like Juju this week. Uh, <laughs> so start him, but also sit him. Okay, got it. Start him if you're only in other options, Michael Gallup. Okay. But I mean, Denver's got the number one pass defense, and we talked about how this game's probably going to be a route. They, Kansas City might get their starters out of there pretty soon. And I just, I, I don't know that I can rely on a guy that's been as inconsistent as Juju to bring it this week. I'd rather somebody who I'm more confident that can bring it. All right. Sounds good. Um, Tom, I wish you luck in your, in your fantasy playoffs here and your fantasy finals and another amazing show, man. Always a blast. Always a good time. And thank you guys at home so much for joining us today on the fantasy injury team podcast. And thank you so much for your continued support. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. Good luck. Go get a championship.